Welcome back to my writing room, everybody. Uh, I'm Matt Wallace, and thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to spend some of your precious time with me here in my lonely little writer sanctum. Uh, I very much appreciate it. Uh, me not being naked on today's vlog is uh, brought to you by my t-shirt of the day, which is Rogue One. Um, the only t-shirt I've ever owned with Donnie Yen on it, which is awesome. And, um, I just, I freestyled that just then. Should that be like a, should that be a reoccurring thing? The t-shirt of the day bit? Did you all, did you enjoy that? Let me know in the comments. Um, I want to thank everybody who's been following along with my new project here, this uh, this new vlog that I'm doing, uh, subscribing and commenting and sharing it on social media. I especially want to uh, thank my good friend Lexi Alexander, who uh, tweeted uh, yesterday's vlog to all her followers and said really nice things about it, um, and, then, and then gave me a bunch of shit because I hadn't told her I'd been vlogging. Uh, because Lexi is one of the most genuine, no bullshit, no ego people that I've ever known in my life. And like, she doesn't, she legitimately doesn't understand why a novice friend of hers would not want to tell or would be hesitant to tell an Oscar nominated director that they are like poorly attempting to produce video content on their own. Doesn't occur to her. She's just like, why didn't you tell me? And she shakes her fist, her very lethal fist and, uh, feet as well. 90 mile an hour kick does Lexi have, so don't fuck with her. But do follow her on Twitter. She's an amazing director, filmmaker, writer, uh, advocate for women and people of color, of color in the entertainment industry, just, and, you know, Palestinians, and just, she's, she's just an amazing person. I love her to death. Uh, so I want to thank her for, for that, and the rest of you, I really appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> uh, I attended my first Weight Watchers meeting last night in about three weeks, um, with, uh, I go every week with Nikki and my mother-in-law, Jody. Um, Nikki, my wife, and my mother-in-law, Jody. I say these things now because, again, married man. Let's see. Um, but, yeah, we hadn't been in about three weeks because we, you know, we moved into a new home and we had a wedding and all these things are very time-consuming and stressful. And we just didn't, we didn't go. And in addition to that, we also, like, fell way the hell off the wagon. We just stopped paying attention and stop tracking and just we're eating whatever the fuck we wanted so long story short i gained i gained back six pounds a little over six pounds and um not catastrophic i'm not stressing about it it's uh it's hard when you have like a really competitive nature when you're someone who wants to win it's even harder for my wife nikki like her competitive nature makes mine look like i'm a you know like a eight-year-old boxcar racer like on the little rascals you know like she's just she's on another level so it's really hard for her but it's hard for me too but um, I'm, t I'm choosing to focus on the positive, which is we started uh, Weight Watchers in January, and uh, I, you know, I love I love my wife, and our relationship is like abnormally good. Like we really complement each other well, and we get along great, and I just everything about it is fantastic. The one slightly negative aspect about it, and it's good to be able to re recognize and acknowledge these things, is uh, we're both. We love food, and we're both really, like, emotional eaters, too. So, like, we just, we enable the crap out of each other. We enable each other in an awesome way. It's like, you know, we'll look at each other and go, let's go to New Orleans and eat the whole town. And it's amazing, but then we feel bad about it after. So, yeah, um, since we've been together, we found ourselves in a place where both, I think both of us were the heaviest we'd ever been. I know I was. I was in January, at the beginning of this year, I was over 450 pounds, a little over, which is the heaviest I've ever been by, like, a wide margin. Uh, no no pun intended. Um, I'm a little fortunate, and I'm like, I'm almost 6'4", so I carry it a little, I carry it a little better than most other people. But that's also kind of a detriment, because it's not as noticeable. When you gain weight slowly over time, you don't notice as much. You just look at yourself in the mirror, and, like, 100 pounds have gone by. But, um... No, we started in January, and since January, we've really been working on it, and we both lost about 30 pounds, uh, over a little over 30 pounds, and now we back a little bit, but I'm, not, I'm calling it 30 pounds. So I'm choosing to look at it like, you know, we, rather than finding ourselves um, approaching November and both of us just being way fatter, uh, we, you know, put a finger in that particular dike, and uh, we are rolling it back slowly but surely. And, uh, you know, you're going to stumble along the way, and that's not a, that's not a huge deal, but... Um, the reason we, honestly, the reason we started doing, I mean, it needed to be done because we were both, we just, we were getting to a very unhealthy place with our weight and health is the key word there. And I'll get into that in a minute. But the reason we started was because Nikki's father passed very unexpectedly in, in December of last year. And I'm not going to go into that in detail because Nikki's going to watch this and she'll start crying and I don't want to do that. But, um, one of the results of that was we, her mother 
And her and I, we all joined Weight Watchers together and decided we're going to try to get healthy so that, <clears throat> you know, that doesn't happen again for as long as possible. Um, and it's a good thing to do because <clears throat> we want to be healthy and we want to be around for each other for a long time. And I emphasize health because it's not, to me, it's not an aesthetic thing. And it's important to, to differentiate that. I've always been um, a person of size. Uh, I enjoy that. I actually really enjoy that term, person of size, because like it makes us all sound like fat secret agents on a TV show. It's like Matt Wallace is person of size coming this summer to CBS and we'll never cancel it for 15 seasons, uh, even long after it jumps the shark, because that's who we are and what we do. Anyway, but no, that's just, uh, but I've always thought of myself as, as fat and I don't have a problem with that. As long as there's no judgment attached to the word fat, I don't have an issue. Other people of size do, and that's a you know personal thing, but I was a fat kid. I was that prototypical 80s teen movie fat kid who was just bullied horribly. I never got my comeuppance moment with any of them, unlike in an 80s teen movie. But, you know, that's why I love movies like Monster Squad. And the new It remake was actually really fucking good. Um, kind of sad because I didn't want it to be because I want to hate remake culture. But it was actually really good because they got a, a, an honest according to Hoyle fat kid. And he was amazing. But, yeah, I was, I was a fat kid. And I was bullied really hard for it like a lot of people were. And, uh, you know, and then I became a pro wrestler and I got... And just all these other things. But the, the thing is, the most important thing, one of the most important things I've learned in life, honestly, and this is all my people of size out there, the most important thing I've learned is that being fat doesn't equal being unhealthy and being skinny doesn't equal being healthy. And that is a very, very important lesson to learn if you're a person of size. And they don't teach you that. Nobody teaches that. Um, you know, movies, TV don't teach you that. Going to school doesn't teach you that because kids are fucking, you know, horrible quasi serial killers and packs and uh going to the doctor doesn't teach you that because doctors are fucking lazy and they lay everything off on you being fat and that completely obfuscates us getting proper health care but yeah it doesn't it's a, it's it was a strange thing when i finally learned that <clears throat> you know when i be, kind of became an athlete later on i started training in martial arts training to wrestle became a professional wrestler uh, learning about anatomy and all these different things and you and suddenly realized hey I've been I've been kind of lied to my whole fucking life about this thing It's really just people not liking me being fat because they have a fear of it And you're like a dark mirror that they look into so they project all the shit on you But you know, it's it's not I was at my healthiest. I've ever been in my life I think I was 275 pounds and I was still, I was still a fat fuck by most people's standards. Like people would look at me and go, "Hey, there's a fat guy." And I was in phenomenal shape. I was working three shows as a professional wrestler every weekend. I was training all week. I was instructing uh, self defense and combat. I was doing martial arts. I was doing all this stuff, and I could go. You know, I would get in the ring with these guys who came from like football or bodybuilding, and they had these hard muscles choking their lungs, and they were gassed after a couple of minutes. And I was just running circles around them because I was in really good shape. I was fat. And I was very healthy and in good shape. And you can absolutely be both of those things. And that's something they never teach you. And that bodybuilding hard muscle shit, that's not health. That's body modification. When you look at like, like I love the, like The Rock is a fantastic guy. I don't mean to bag on But you like, you look at The Rock, you look at Hugh Jackman in fucking the X-Men movies. And you look at these like ridiculously sculpted bodies they have. And it's, it's a ridiculous ideal. And that is not health. That is body modification. That's like getting a bunch of tattoos or a bunch of piercings. Only way more extreme and unhealthy for you, to be honest with you. Um, but, you know, and, and they all hate living that way. They do it because they get paid millions of dollars to express this superhuman ideal on screen. So we get both of those conflicting images of, like, what healthy is and what unhealthy is. And it's, it's all complete crap. And it helped me make peace with, with being a fat dude. I don't mind being a fat dude. I like being a fat dude. I don't want to be, I, you know, my size gives me a lot of advantages in this world. There are disadvantages, but it's all shit like I can't fit in a booth at Denny's or whatever. And some assholes are going to give you crap. But I like the way I am. I have gotten to a place where I am obese and it is unhealthy for me. And it's bad for my joints and it's going gonna, it's gonna to shorten my life. And so I'm trying to do something about that. But I'm not trying to get skinny. I'm never going to be skinny. I don't want to be skinny. I want to be fat and healthy. Uh, that is my goal and that is I you know, that's Nikki's goal as well She's I Nikki is beautiful and Rubenesque and exactly the way that I I think of uh, Femininity and I think of women like that's my idea of what a what a beautiful sexy woman is I never want her to be like to lose the to lose all those attributes We just need to get to a place of health not to a place of like, you know thinness. So yeah <clears throat> fat and healthy is my goal for 2018 and uh, getting back on the horse and, uh, you know, went to the meeting last night and I'm working on it. Um, and it's interesting doing, you know, dealing with all this weight stuff because 
the middle grade book I'm working on right now, the middle grade novel, I'm putting a lot of my childhood experiences into that of being bullied and all that and all that kind of stuff. And it's just one thing kind of feeds the other. And I'm trying to keep it in a healthy perspective. You know, I'm trying to use it just in that sort of like exorcism kind of way. Novels, fiction is, is the best way to exercise demons, in my opinion. Or, you know, if you make music or you draw or whatever the fuck it is. But that's all. I really like that is the best way to exercise personal demons. And that's pretty much what we do. So I'm trying to use it in that context and also kind of look at it as that's where I began and look at where I am now and isn't that awesome. And uh, I don't know. But so, yeah, the watch, the, the phrase, the key phrase for today for all my people of size out there and everybody who maybe misconstrues people of size if you're not and you're looking at a fat person because a lot of people do because it's just a cultural thing your your phrase there is fat and healthy that's all we need to be we don't need to be thin we don't need to be sculpted we just need to be fat and healthy there's nothing wrong with that past that if anybody can't deal with it it's their fucking problem and i'm frankly i'm sick of like fat shaming this like all this stupid bull i'm just sick of even acknowledging it as valid because it's not it's just ridiculous so yeah Fat and healthy people. Um, I've got writing to do. I've got to go exercise my childhood uh, fat kid pain. So I'm going to go do that. Um, I will see you tomorrow. It's Friday. You've almost made it. Uh, hang in there. You know, as uh, Soul Asylum once said, because I was a white kid in the 90s. And if you were a white kid in the early 90s, you were like issued Soul Asylum albums. Uh, we live through another day and it's a good excuse to celebrate. And I, I think that's a good dictum for all of us. So... You made it through another day. It's a good excuse to celebrate. And you're about to make it through another week. And uh, I will see you tomorrow.